One of the earliest uses of engineering nuts was on the left-hand wall of Cenotaph Corner. This is a magnificent rock climbing area in North Wales. It's one of the, uh, the great rock problems of its time was the climb Cenotaph Corner, which is very close to this climb. Tell you should know that'll make you both quiver and quail of a hole in your toe where a clinker should go, and it's all for the want of a nail. You're a thousand feet high and you're nearing the sky, and you can't get a grip on the shale. Only ten feet away there's a smashing belay, and it's all for the want of a nail. There's scarcely a grip for a small fingertip And a thousand foot drop if you fail There's a pumping machine where your heart should have been And it's all for the want of a nail On this climb, the, uh, the use of nuts demand great skill and a high degree of organization. Every, every item was carefully checked and sorted before the climb began first 20 feet or so are quite easy and always have been climbed free. In free climbing, pedons and nuts are used only to protect the climber against a possible fall and are not used to support any part of the climber's weight. The left wall of a Santa corner posed a particular problem. It was split by a single crack for 120 feet. At the start, the crack is quite wide. Artificial aids are used, and nuts up to an inch in diameter are inserted into the crack. As the climber moves up the wall, the crack gets progressively thin. Oh, daylight was ending as I was descending down Finsbrook just by Appertour. When a voice said, hey you, in the way keepers do it, the worst face that I ever saw. He said, oh, this land is my master's. To this I stood shaking my head. For sooner than pop from the mountains I love, well, I think that I'd rather be dead. I'm a climber, I'm a climber from Manchester way. And I get all my pleasures the hard working way. I might be a white slave on a Monday. At the time when I was climbing in the, in the mid-50s, early, late-50s rather, the, um, the use of peat on it was frowned upon, and it was very much an ethical position. I can remember no discussions of it being an ecological, of ecological concern. You know, in the Mount Rescue, for instance, we always carried peat on the name of the game was never take him out of the clip and never use him, use anything but a piton. Uh, several expedient reasons, one is they take longer to put in and longer to take out, and when you're cold and wet, and as you usually are climbing in Britain, you don't want to use pitons. So you get very crafty at using chocks and nuts. Was all, if you couldn't do it with just using protection, forget it, you know, don't do it. In the mid, 50s, the left wall posed a particular problem. The crack proved too difficult to climb using free climbing techniques of those days, and it would have been unthinkable at that time to use pitons. Ron Mosley, a contemporary of Joe Brown's, solved the problem in 1956 by patiently inserting pebbles for the full length of the crack, and slowly he engineered his way to the top. Climbing on pebbles because they tended to be a little delicate, somewhat dependent on, on rock mating with rock. It, I can remember, at least on two occasions, when the pebble was a different, or apparently an incompatible material with the, with the, with the crack that it was being inserted into and just shattered, literally just ripped out and uh, sheared off. 
And, and I think one of the things that perhaps it did was that it made you very careful. And that when you moved on, on, a, on a pebble protection, you were always uh, cognizant of the fact that, that that's exactly what it was, a pebble jammed in a crack. Close to the top of the left wall is a fairly long section when you're on it, which is which is quite thin and requires very careful, delicate placement, and must have been really a, a, a serious occasion for Mosley to be climbing on aid using pebbles for a first ascent. Even in the early 60s, when nuts were becoming very popular, the the thin part at the top of the climb was um, still very difficult to climb using nuts. And when anyone was on that climb, people would come from, from all over the vicinity to watch because they knew that there was a big likelihood that the, the climb would peel, fall off it. And coming off that thing, you could literally hear the nuts zing out of the, out of the crack. Falling, when I was doing most of my climbing, was strictly out of order. It was considered highly inappropriate. And you'd never climb to the point where you would fall off. Though you'd come right up to that point and, and, and assess that, that if you went any further, you would. But it was not considered you know, fair game to fall. Perhaps, again, because of the type of protection we were using at that time. first climbed. Some parts of it were climbed free. Most of it was aided. Since that time it has been climbed completely free using nuts. And this movement is reflected in the entire climbing world today. I have to smile when I look at the array of nuts and mechanical devices that are around us today. We are now presented with, with this paradox that, that having moved from a, a position of fairly simple, uncomplicated climbing to the massive you know, mechanical devices of the 60s, where we're, we may be moving back to a time where a simple climbing of a hard nature is a place that we have yet to arrive at. Now this is the end of my sad little song and the end of my sad little tale.